Hello once again YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here, bringing you some Feed the Beast tutorials. Today I will be going over build craft transport pipes. This is actually the first video in my tutorial series, and I will be starting off with the build craft mod. Um, not only will I be covering transport pipes from the build craft mod, but I will also be covering structure pipes as well as facades. So let's get started. In case you were wondering, I am using version 1.0.1 .1 of Feed the Beast Ultimate Pack. I will only be covering to, uh, items and bot mods in the Feed the Beast Ultimate Pack. Here we can see uh, Buildcraft wooden transport pipes. As you can see, they cannot connect to each other, but they will connect to other transport pipes that are adjacent to them. The crafting recipe is any type of wooden plank found in the mod pack, as well as a piece of glass. Now, like I said, uh, any type of wooden plank can be used, and as you can see, quite a plethora of planks uh, and other materials can be used to get uh, the wooden transport pipes. Uh, anything from the planks that aren't even implemented uh, in the mod pack yet to uh, ones that you see all the time, such as oak or uh, spruce. So that's pretty good. Coming over here, we can see that we have. Uh, two chests connected to each other, a redstone engine. The way these things work is you turn it on with a redstone engine and it will suck items out of a chest and pump it into a, the pipe system or another inventory that you have connected to the pipe. If we could take a wrench, we can change the direction or so to say which item the uh, pipe is taking its uh, inventory out of. So if we right click, you'll notice that the pipe has changed its texture and that's because the darkened end is now sucking out of the chest on the right instead of the one on the left. And of course, if we right click again, it will sw switch back to the chest on the left. Turning on a redstone engine connected to a wooden transport pipe will suck out one item at a time. As you can see, that one item is passing through the pipe and into the next inventory. Pretty useful. Essentially, this is how you will suck items out of inventories with any of your buildcraft pipe systems. You will need a wooden transport pipe. There are alternatives in the future, but for the most basic uh, setups, this is probably what you will be using. Over here, we have the wooden pipe attached to a Stirling engine, another buildcraft engine. Uh, ignore the fact that it's connecting to the Stirling engine. That's just a, um, a bug in the uh, mod pack so far. Don't worry about it. It's not going to affect the... Uh, the pipe at all. Attaching it to a Sterling engine will extract up to 52 items at a time. So if we turn this on and we watch how many items come through with this at once, you can see that quite a large portion is taken out of the, um, the chest at a time from each stack. And of course it goes through the pipe system into the next inventory. Pretty sweet. Here we have it set set up next to a combustion engine. Now again, ignore the fact that it's connecting itself. We have it all fueled up and uh, got a little bit of water in there to cool it off. Connecting it to a combustion engine will extract up to 64 items at a time from the inventory that is connected to. So here we can see we've got quite a lot of redstone lamps, or inverted red lamps. We're going to turn this on and as you can see, entire stacks should be removed at a time from this chest. Essentially, this is the fastest way to transport items out of an inventory chest uh, and push them along into your pipe system. Uh, I th something I didn't even know is the fact that items can stack inside the pipe. So that's pretty useful, and uh, I think that's pretty um, pretty efficient. As long as you can keep this bad boy cooled off, you should have quite awesome system setups and uh, fastest transportation in the universe, pretty much. Um, now, the one thing interesting about uh, wooden pipes is you can actually use them to make more compact systems. As you can see, none of these wooden pipes are connected to each other. So if I turn on these three redstone engines and allow them to transport items out of their respective chests, you can see that not, none of those items are going to ever connect and go into this pipe system here. So. It's pretty useful, I guess, um, other than the fact that it uh, sucks items out of the chests. Uh, I guess that's pretty much the extent of its uh, purpose. But um, there you have it, wooden transport pipes. Moving on, we have the cobblestone transport pipe on the left and the stone transport pipe on the right. As you can see, the cobblestone transport pipe and the stone transport pipe will connect to themselves 
The recipe for the cobblestone transport pipe essentially is the same as the wooden pipe, replacing the wooden planks with cobblestone though. As you can see, there's only one way to create this in the mod pack, uh, but uh, cobblestone's relatively uh, easy resource to come by, so it shouldn't be a problem. Same thing with stone, stone, glass, stone, transport pipe. As, again, there's no other way to make uh, this in the mod pack. Now, the interesting about interesting thing about these pipes is that they will not connect to each other. As you can see, the cobblestone pipe will not connect to the stone pipe. Uh, the purpose of this is to give more than one type of pipe that you can transport your uh, items through without having them connect to each other necessarily. Um, essentially, these will be the most commonly used pipes you will probably be using in your pipe systems with the Buildcraft pipes available. Here we can see a simple setup if we turn both of these redstone engines on, each of them containing their own respective materials, cobblestone in this chest, stone in this chest, you'll see that as they travel along the pipes they will not connect to each other and those pipe systems will remain separate until they come to a position where the pipe systems do intersect through use of another pipe or they enter into their inventory chests and whatnot. Something to know about the pipes in general, this doesn't exactly pertain to cobblestone or stone pipes, but the pipe placement in re uh, respect to machines and other blocks in the mod pack is very important. As you can see here, I have a system where coal was being fed in to the bottom face of this block and iron ore is being fed into the top face of this furnace. The reason that is is because as you can see, the top slot for the furnace uh, is where you're placing the items that you want cooked and the bottom slot is for the fuel, in this case coal. The slot on the side is for the output, essentially what you get when you cook this item with the coal or fuel, and uh, is the output slot right there. So basically it's a common sense thing, you have to place your pipes according to which slot they would be entering or exiting from. Uh, obviously this pipe right here is attached to the right side, and when I turn it on it will suck out iron ingots from this slot. If I were to place the coal going into the top slot, coal would enter into the top slot of this furnace if I place the pipe to the top face. Essentially this means that you have to be, you know, uh, a little bit smart with how you place blocks and pipes uh, relative to one another. Um, some blocks and machines do completely bypass this rule. Uh, they are more advanced machines. Some of them have customizable slots, inputs and outputs. Uh, some of them allow you to input and output a from a single face of the machine. Those usually are dealing more with the multi-block uh, machines. You will uh, be seeing more of those in their respective tutorials. I won't be covering them today, but um, just a useful tip when dealing with uh, pipes. Here we have the iron pipe. As you can see, the iron pipe can and will connect to itself. The recipe for an iron pipe is two iron ingots on either side of a piece of glass. This is the only way to get iron transport pipes. Now, let's say you have two, uh, two pipelines feeding into one. What happens when uh, those two pipelines connect? Now, the thing is, is the cobblestone transport pipe and the stone transport pipes don't exactly designate where items should go. And as you can see, we want all those items to end up in this chest up here, but the cobblestone is going directly past that pipe completely. In fact, I don't think any cobblestone... Well, no, there is one cobblestone. Just now, a piece of cobblestone is going into that chest. But we have stone entering this chest, and we have cobblestone entering that chest. So how do you fix it? You use an iron pipe. Here we could see that we have an iron pipe set up. Basically, what the dark faces of the iron pipe mean are the out inputs. The clear face means the output. If we take a wrench, we can determine manually which side is the output. Now the top pipe is going to be the output. When we turn both of these on, it will force all of the inputs to go out of the one output, forcing the cobblestone and the stone from these chests to move upwards into the chest above. And there you have it. Those two items are now being forced into this single pipeline. Essentially, this allows you to combine pipelines and transfer uh, materials that aren't the same or materials in separate pipelines into one pipeline in order to save some space or some resources. 
Now, another thing interesting and useful about the uh, iron pipe is that you can affect its output with a redstone signal. So if I t switch this lever, it's going to change every time I flick it, including if I turn the lever back off. This allows you to change the, uh, the output even wirelessly through uh, wireless redstone and all that stuff. However, the iron pipe will not output to a wooden transport pipe, and the reason is because the wooden transport pipe is solely to put items into a piping system, not out of a piping system. So no matter how many times I flick this switch, it will never change that output. If I have an iron pipe that has no designated output, the items should go back to into the pipe system that they were coming from. These items should travel back along the pipe system. Not entirely sure if this will work. Let's see if it does. Yes, it does. Fantastic. So essentially, if an iron pipe does not have any output, it will push the items back into the pipe system from whence it just came. Here we have the golden transport pipe. As you can see, it connects to itself. The recipe for it is two gold ingots on either side of a piece of glass. This is, again, the only way to get this particular pipe. The purpose of the golden transport pipe is to give a speed boost to items passing along the pipe line it is in. As you can see, I've got some gold ingots in here. I turn on this redstone engine. The golden pipe will give a slight speed boost to these ingots as they pass through the pipe itself. You can see this one's speeding along a little bit faster. Now there's been changes and uh, some confusion recently because the way this works has been altered uh, in the mod. You now require three gold pipes uh, next to each other consecutively in order to achieve a full speed boost. As you can see, these are reverting back to their original speed in about two or three pipes of length. Um, however, when using a system where three golden pipes are next to each other, it will give the full effect. When connected to a cobblestone, it will give the speed bonus. It will give a speed boost that will last 19 blocks. As you can see, these lamps are traveling down the pipeline at a much faster rate. However, again, connecting it to a stone pipeline instead of a cobblestone pipeline will give a much further reach with the speed boost, increasing its length to 39 blocks. As you can see, those lamps are still moving at a decent pace 39 blocks down this pipeline into the chest. Now, I had some trouble figuring this out. I'm not entirely sure if this is even a part of the mod anymore, but apparently you were able to turn off the effects of the pipe by attaching or giving the pipe a redstone signal. I have not been able to get this to work. I don't know why. I'm not finding anything online. You can do your own investigation, of course, as to uh, whether this is even a thing anymore, but um, from what I can understand, it, uh, it just doesn't work. Here we have the diamond transport pipe. As you can see, it connects to itself. The recipe for it is two diamonds alongside a piece of glass. And again, this is the only way to get this uh, particular pipe. Of course, two diamonds will obviously make this the most expensive pipe that you could possibly build. However, it is one of the most useful. Essentially, the diamond pipe acts as a... Uh, a sort of sorting system for your machinery and your pipe systems. Uh, here we have um, a diamond pipe and as you can see there's colors on the different out outputs slash inputs of this pipe. When you right click on the pipe you could see filters. Essentially what this means is whatever is placed into these filters, any item, any block, will go through that output after it passes through the diamond pipe. So diamonds will go through the in this example, diamonds will go out of the red output, inverted red lamps will go out of the light gray or white output, and redstone engines will go out of the green output. You can set the items by simply taking an item that you want, and uh, we want iron blocks to go through the yellow output. So we will simply take the iron blocks and click them into that GUI. It will not remove any of the inventory when you click, and if you want to remove it, you just simply click again. So now when we turn on all of these, 
we should see the machines pump out all of their respective items into the pipeline and they will be sorted and filtered into their own outputs through the filter set with the diamond pipe. Redstone engines will only go out to the green, inverted red lamps will only go up to the white, diamonds will only go out to the red, and the blocks of iron will only go out the yellow, as designated by the GUI. As you can see, you can already, you could probably already see the benefits of using something like this. Uh, it's definitely useful in sorting out your uh, stuff, and as time goes on, you will accumulate a plethora of items and blocks and machines that you will eventually probably want to sort out. This is a fantastic way of doing so. Something else to note, if you place two of the same item or more into a particular filter and another of the same item into another filter, it will change the probability of that item going through the system into those filters. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is a probability. This is not 100% um, an exact uh, like statistic, I guess you could say, or a, an exact number that will outcome from this. Uh, but the probability of diamonds going through the light gray output is now increased over the black output. So if we were to turn this on, eventually more diamonds would end up in the chest connected to the white output instead of the black output because there is a two to one chance that the diamonds will pass through the white output as designated by the filter. One last thing to note is that if filters have been designated and an item passes through it that has not been designated into any of the filters that are uh, connected to the pipeline, the item will be simply pushed out. So here you can see I have inverted red lamps and diamonds pumping into this pipeline. Now the inverted red lamps will pass into the yellow output and continue on. The diamonds, however, have not been designated by any of the filters. Now, as we watch the diamond come through, the pipe will determine that no filters have been designated for the diamond and it will simply f push it out. If we free up this filter, however, the diamond will allowed, be allowed to pass through on it. Oh, actually, no. I'm, so, I'm totally sorry about that. Uh, I thought it would go back on itself, but it, it completely did not. Um, apparently, uh, something I forgot to look up, uh, if a diamond or, yeah, if a diamond pipe doesn't have a filter for an item at all, uh, it will not allow the item to go back on its uh, original pipe input and uh, we'll simply force it out of the pipe pipeline. Sorry about that. Here you can see we have the obsidian transport pipe. Uh, obviously you can see they do not connect to each other. The recipe is two pieces of obsidian on either side of a piece of glass and of course this is the only way you can get the obsidian transport pipe. The purpose of the obsidian transport pipe is to suck up items off the ground. Now, without an engine attached, the only way you can suck up items off the ground is if they are touching the actual square that the block, the transport pipe itself, is placed in. So we throw an item in there, it'll suck it up uh, right uh, in the block that the obsidian transport occupies. Placing any items outside of that will not get sucked up uh, as long as there's no power being supplied to the transport pipe. Moving on over here, you can see I have a redstone engine attached to the pipe. This increases the area of effect. Uh, of where the um, obsidian transport pipe can uh, suck up blocks. Placing an item out here will not get sucked up, but placing an item in here will get sucked up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, connecting this to a comb uh, sterling engine um, will increase the area of effect much more so than a redstone engine will and uh, will also increase the amount of items picked up at once. Should be around 10 items, but that's not a constant number. And uh, if we drop some items down off over here, you could see these ones don't get picked up, but uh, the ones dropped in this area easily get sucked up. And if we drop loads of them at once, you could see that they almost all get sucked up uh, immediately uh, in stacks at a time almost. Um, not full stacks, but stacks of uh, around 10 blocks at a time. Uh, coming over here, if we uh, add a combustion engine to this, 
And, uh, oh, forgot to turn it on. Give me a second. If we turn on this combustion engine, basically this will increase the amount of items that can get sucked up, but the area of effect does not change. So again, placing uh, blocks outside of this area of effect uh, does not do not get sucked up. Placing them in, however, will allow them to get sucked up. And if I throw this entire stack out, it sucks up the entire stack at once. Fantastic. Moving on, uh, we can see that the uh, the largest area that you can have with a um, an engine, either sterling or combustion, attached to a, uh, an obsidian pipe, is a 7x7 seven seven square area with the obsidian pipe four blocks above it. And if we turn this on and we throw in some items... Eventually, they'll get all sucked up into this pipe. Now, effectively, the cheapest way to use the obsidian pipe is to simply have water pushing the items into this the block that the pipe occupies. So if we throw in some blocks over here, eventually the water will carry it into the block, the pipe itself, and it'll get sucked up into the pipe without the use of an engine or anything else. Now, if we come over here, one thing that... Uh, I know for a fact not a lot of people know is the fact that the obsidian transport pipe can suck items out of a minecart, uh, specifically a minecart with a chest in it. So we have some items inside this uh, minecart and if we push it along until it gets underneath this mine or this obsidian pipe it should start sucking out items from inside the minecart chest and pushing them into the pipeline. So there you have it, obsidian pipes. Here we have the sandstone transport pipe. The sandstone transport pipe will connect to itself. The recipe for a sandstone transport pipe is obviously two sandstone and a piece of glass yielding eight transport pipes. This is the only way, way to get this recipe. Uh, it should be noted that the chiseled sandstone, the smooth sandstone can be substituted to make this recipe. Moving on over here, the purpose of the sandstone transport pipe is not only to connect uh, cobblestone and stone pipes as well as any other pipe that's been mentioned before and after this but um it's also allows more compact systems by not connecting to machines as you could see these items not only are connecting uh, from a cobblestone pipe to a stone pipe with the sandstone pipe but it is also not entering this furnace and that is because the sandstone pipe will not connect to any machine blocks at all. Again, we can see that the sandstone pipe will connect to any other pipe uh, including itself and all the ones that I will say in this video before and after. And um, yeah, there you have it, sandstone pipes. Here you can see the void transport pipe. You can see that they connect to each other. The recipe is slightly different from the rest. It requires a piece of redstone, some glass, an ending sack in this fashion, yielding eight transport pipes. Again, this is the only way to get this item. Now, the purpose of the void pipe is to actually delete items. Um, so if I turn this on and I send uh, some of these items through the pipeline, when they enter this pipe, they'll actually be deleted from the pipe's inventory and therefore from the game. Uh, something to note about that is it's actually less CPU intensive than dropping items into lava. So if you want to delete items, this is the way to do it. Do it with a void pipe. Uh, another thing to note is this is kind of an uncommon pipe. I probably You probably won't be using it very often. However, uh, it's a good safeguard against things that can cause server crashes, as well as backups and overflows. So there you have it, void pipes. Here we have the emerald transport pipe. They do not connect to one another. The recipe is two emeralds on either side of a piece of glass, yielding a transport pipes as always. The purpose of the emerald transport pipe is to function similarly to the wooden transport pipe, sucking items out of a chest when given power from an engine. Turning this on, you could see that it is going to start sucking items out of this chest. However, you will note that I have multiple items in here, and the special thing about the the um, emerald transport pipe is that it will transport items one item out of, at a time if connected to a redstone engine, one item at a time from a stack, going from each stack in the container that it is sucking out of. 
the uh, only thing you have to worry about this is um, you have to set the filter. If we right click on the emerald transport pipe you'll see a similar filter as the um, the one in the diamond transport pipe. Uh, here I have it set to filter inverted red lamps and coal. And as you can see coal and inverted red lamps are the only things going through this filter even though gold ingots are also in the chest. So by setting the filter you can determine what goes comes out of each chest that this connect is connected to. Over here you can see that the filter is blocks of iron as well as emeralds. Right now I have emeralds in here but I do not have blocks of iron in there. And even though it is powered and on and the filter includes emeralds, if one of the items that is being filtered through the emerald transport pipe is not present in the chest next to it, it will not suck out any of the items that are in the filter. Uh, however, I have noticed that there is um, a little bit of a lie. Uh, it does suck out one item if that item is the next thing that it is supposed to be sucking out. So if I were to get a, an iron block here and I throw it in, it'll suck that item out. And now it's going to suck out an emerald. And now it should be sucking out another iron block, but there's no iron in the chest. So if I take out these emeralds and I take an iron block, even though the emeralds have been taken out, and theoretically the emerald transport pipe should not be transporting items out of the pipe chest itself, if I place this block of iron in there, it will get sucked out because the block of iron was the next thing to get sucked out of the pipe, or the chest, through the pipe. Lastly, uh, like I said before, it does act like a wooden pipe. So increasing the uh, power supplied to the pipe with, uh, say, a better engine will increase the amount of items being sucked out at once. And uh, let's throw in the stack of emeralds. They should all get sucked out at once. As you can see there, there's no emeralds left in this. So basically, this is a an advanced version of the wooden pipe. Excuse me for that. Um, but... Uh, it's got its own limitations, and uh, there you have it, emerald transport pipes. Here we can see the cobblestone structure pipe. As you can see, it connects to itself. The recipe for a cobblestone structure pipe is a piece of gravel and a cobblestone transport pipe, essentially creating a clogged up uh, cobblestone transport pipe. Uh, now the purpose of these is solely to uh, connect pipe wire along two pipe systems without having the pipe pipelines interact with one another. Now this looks a little bit strange. These pipes are supposed to be connected for whatever reason, uh, either my Minecraft or for any other reason. These do not appear to be connected, but I can prove it to you by placing some pipe wire on these pipes. And as you can see, the pipe wire does connect to all three of them. So that's either a glitch with my Minecraft or something else, but these are supposed to be connected pipes or at least appear to be connected. However, like I said, the pipelines themselves will not interact with one another. You don't have to worry about items crossing from one pipe to the other if they are connected with a cobblestone structure pipe. Here you can see stone facades attached to a cobblestone transport pipe. Essentially what a facade is, is it allows you to disguise your pipes as another material or block and uh, effectively cover them up. Now, the recipe for a facade requires three cobblestone structure pipes and the material that you want to make the facade look like. This also requires the assembly table to complete the recipe. As you can see, facades can attach themselves to all the pipes that we have discussed so far. The advantage to using facades uh, with buildcraft pipes is it allows you to place a pipes disguised as those blocks next to other blocks directly whereas if you used covers from the uh, the other mods that are installed uh, red power covers uh, you wouldn't be able to place a, uh, a covered pipe next to another block completely adjacent to it so as you can see the texture on it is a little it's a little buggy it's okay it's totally all right but uh, you will notice that here we have an entire cobblestone pipe covered in facades on all six faces able to snugly fit inside this array of uh, iron blocks. 
You'll also take note that the facade allows pipes to go through themselves. Here, here we can see one pipe has a facade on it, the other side has the facade. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting my words mixed up. Here you can see the cobblestone pipe is able to go through the facade that is on it to the other cobblestone pipe and connect them, essentially uh, turning these into the equivalent of a uh, cover uh, or the covers that you use with the red power mod. And here's a big wall of all the facades you can make. <laughs> so there you have it, facades. Or facades, if you'd rather. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed this Feed the Beast Ultimate Mod Pack Buildcraft 3 Transport Pipes tutorial. If you want to see more of my tutorials, click the links at the end of the video to watch the next tutorial video that I'll be releasing. I'll be doing the Buildcraft uh, Mod Pack first, or the Buildcraft Mod first, and then I'll be, be moving on to other mods after that. Uh, click the links at the end of the video to watch some of my other stuff as well. Comment, rate, favor, and subscribe. Tell me what you think. Tell me if there's anything you would like to see me go over first after I go over the Buildcraft stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks, and peace out. Once again, YouTube, Chris the Nightbringer here, bringing you some Feed the Beast tutorials. Today, I will be going over Buildcraft Transport Pipes. This is actually the first video in my tutorial series, and I will be starting off with the Buildcraft mod. Um, not only will I be covering transport pipes from the Buildcraft mod, but I will also be covering structure pipes as well as facades. So let's get started. In case you were wondering, I am using version 1.0.1 .1 of Feed the Beast Ultimate Pack. I will only be covering to, uh, items and bot mods in the Feed the Beast Ultimate Pack. Here we can see uh, Buildcraft wooden transport pipes. As you can see, they cannot connect to each other, but they will connect to other transport pipes that are adjacent to them. The crafting recipe is any type of wooden plank found in the mod pack as well as a piece of glass. Now, like I said, extract up to 52 items at a time. So if we turn this on and we watch how many items come through with this at once, you can see that quite a large portion is taken out of the, um, the chest at a time from each stack. And of course, it goes through the pipe system into the next inventory. Pretty sweet. Here we have it set set up next to a combustion engine. Now, again, ignore the fact that it's connecting itself. We have it all fueled up and uh, got a little bit of water in there to cool it off. Connecting it to a combustion engine will extract up to 64 items at a time from the inventory that is connected to. So here we can see we've got quite a lot of redstone lamps, or inverted red lamps. We're going to turn this on, and as you can see, entire stacks should be removed at a time from this chest. Essentially, this is the fastest way to transport items out of an inventory chest uh, and push them along into your pipe system. Uh, any type of wooden plank can be used, and as you can see, quite a plethora of planks uh, and other materials can be used to get uh, the wooden transport pipes. Uh, anything from the planks that aren't even implemented uh, in the mod pack yet to uh, ones that you see all the time, such as oak or uh, spruce. So that's pretty good. Coming over here, we can see that we have uh, two chests connected to each other, a redstone engine. The way these things work is you turn it on with a redstone engine and it will suck items out of a chest and pump it into uh, the pipe system or another inventory that you have connected to the pipe. If we could take a wrench, we can change the direction or so to say which item the uh, pipe is taking its uh, inventory out of. So if we right click, you'll notice that the pipe has changed its texture and that's because the darkened end is now sucking out of the chest on the right instead of the one on the left. And of course, if we right click again, it will sw switch back to the chest on the left. Turning on a redstone engine connected to a wooden transport pipe will suck out one item at a time. 
So you can see that one item is passing through the pipe and into the next inventory. Pretty useful. Essentially this is how you will suck items out of inventories with any of your buildcraft pipe systems. You will need a wooden transport pipe. There are alternatives in the future, but for the most basic uh, setups, this is probably what you will be using. Over here we have the wooden pipe attached to a Stirling engine, another buildcraft engine. Uh, ignore the fact that it's connecting to the Stirling engine, that's just a, um, a bug in the uh, mod pack so far. Don't worry about it, it's not going to affect the... Uh, the pipe at all. Attaching it to a Sterling engine will... Uh, I, something I didn't even know is the fact that items can stack inside the pipe. So that's pretty useful and uh, I think that's pretty um, pretty efficient. As long as you can keep this bad boy cooled off, you should have quite awesome system setups and uh, fastest transportation in the universe pretty much. Um, now the one thing interesting about uh, wooden pipes is you can actually use them to make more compact systems. As you can see, none of these wooden pipes are connected to each other. So if I turn on these three redstone engines and allow them to transport items out of their respective chests, you can see that not, none of those items are going to ever connect and go into this pipe system here. So it's pretty useful, I guess, um, other than the fact that it uh, sucks items out of the chests. Uh, I guess that's pretty much the extent of its uh, purpose.